Well. Twenty-one years, eleven months, and eleven days spent giving everyone around him everything he could. Aaron Howard Reed spent that exact amount of time as a great son, a great brother, a great friend, a great soldier, and an all-around great person. He spent his time as a dependable guy, who was completely selfless and would give anything up for the people he loved, touching many with his unforgettable smile. Aaron was a cross-country runner at Southeastern High School and was also the class president. Aaron went on to join the Marines after high school, and on August 3, 2005, six weeks before returning from his tour, he was killed by an IED. He left a lasting impact on anyone who knew him. I believe he was someone who fought for a country that went to this school and he passed away. A soldier. Mr. Ball's son who went to Iraq and fought for our country and unfortunately he uh, lost his life. He was a soldier who died while serving our country. Aaron Reed was somebody who gave his life for our freedom. Aaron Reed was a graduate of Southeastern High School who participated in cross country and he gave the ultimate sacrifice while serving for our country. Uh, I coached him for four years in track. Uh, this was back in Richmonddale. And uh, he, again, like I said, he, he was an outstanding worker. He was a distance runner, but yet had good enough sprint speed that he could run the 400 or 800 for us as well. Um, one of our team leaders from, from day one his freshman year, just to, just to really, everybody loved him, uh, always a smile, got along with everybody. I taught uh, social studies, American history, and, and American government with Aaron. What type of student was Aaron? Um, Aaron was uh, one of those students who was well-rounded. He got involved in anything and everything. He would be the uh, leader of the student section. He would run cross country. He uh, would be in different clubs and organizations and uh, just a friendly kid. I uh, don't know if he ever had an enemy um, and he always had a smile on his face and uh, was, uh, was a good student, but I think he was an even better person. I met Aaron in the seventh grade. We um, sat next to each other in maybe English class or something. He was kind of a class clown. But then we ran cross country and track together from seventh grade through our senior year. So that's when we got close. He was one of my best friends in school. He was the class president, I was the class vice president. But he was, well one, he was friends with everybody. But he was a blast to be around and we were really close. Mm -hmm. he, he was one of the guys we had a group of us that were all really, really close. So we were together all the time. We were always hanging out together. We sat together at lunch. Um, on the weekends, we were always together. We hugged each other when we saw each other in the hall. It was every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every single day. He always had a big smile on his face. Mm -hmm. He was a true friend, too. So it was somebody you could always count on. Aaron was a peacemaker. He was, he was the one in the family that if anybody was having um, issues, like he and his brother fought a lot, as boys do. And he was usually the one to forgive first. He was usually the one to say, oh, this is stupid, let's quit fighting. Um, and I don't think that was because he was younger than his brother. I think that was just his nature. Um, if I was having an issue with, with my older son, he would be like, Okay, mom, don't be mad. <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, he was he was uh, the peacemaker in the family. Uh, you know, Aaron was just a great guy. I think anyone who knew him fell in love with him. Um, he's one of those people who never had any enemies or had any grudges against anybody, which was kind of remarkable. It sounds terrible, 
But whenever I see pictures of him on social media yeah. in his uniform, and he's so solemn, I, I laugh yeah. because that's not how he was at all. And I don't remember him ever like that. He was always, he always had this huge smile on his face. He was always laughing, he was always being crazy. I don't remember him being solemn in a military uniform, but he was so proud of, he was so proud of that, of course. And I, I'm proud of him for that, but that's not how I remember him. Yeah, I mean, there's been so many times when I've been down, I was just like, gosh, I could use a hug from him right yeah, now. The best hugger in the world. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Hugs. He had the best hugs. <laughs> he was always so crazy, but he always knew when you just needed a big hug, too. Yeah, he just squeezed ya. I think I miss most um, his presence and his hugs. He was um, a good hugger. Uh, he would hug me before he left, and he would hug me when he came home, usually. Um, and I, mi I miss that a lot. I miss that a lot. I miss his hugs and his smile <laughs> and his blue eyes. He was full of compliments. He, he was always full he, of compliments. He, 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 he knew how to make you feel good. Yeah, it was, hello, beautiful. Yeah. Good morning, beautiful. Yeah. I think he was a, a good friend to a lot of different people, uh, a lot of different types of people. Uh, he didn't zero in on just the kids that that were like him. He, he included just about everybody uh, in his life. And um, I think he was just very outgoing, very friendly type of person. It's not fair that Reed miss you know he's missing out on all this and he he don't get to see our kids and he didn't get to have a wife and kids and and a woman would have been very lucky to have him very very lucky so he, he I don't know for whatever reason our stadium and track sat beside a railroad track and uh, every day there would be you know, full trains that would go by and, and uh, one day he decided he wanted to race the train which from a coaching and liability perspective was probably not the wisest thing for me to permit but there was a, a good size gravel you know maybe 10 12 feet wide gravel runway on either side of the tracks so he he went to the, uh, the the start right by the stadium of that gravel area and waited on the train to get there and as soon as the train got there he took off sprinting and, uh, and, and, you know, I, I can't remember whether he won or lost, but uh, it kind of set a, a semi-new tradition. And so for three or four years, you know, we could be standing by the school and all of a sudden you hear the train in the distance and the conductor was the same guy every day. He would start to honk his horn about a mile before he got to the stadium. And you'd hear that. And as soon as you heard that, Aaron would take off and then it just kind of grew from one time to the next and eventually it was you know 25 30 track team members all sprinting over to that area that runway and and uh you would hear the uh, train the conductor he would start revving the engine just kind of to rub it and then everybody would take off and it was about 120 130 meter sprint during the meets and stuff is i i had this uh train whistle it was just manual powered uh and when he'd be running his distance things, we'd kind of blow the train whistle you know, on the back stretch. I remember he walked, um, I think he walked me across the field maybe for the homecoming game or something. And he dyed his hair bright orange to match his orange shirt. And his mom was so mad when she saw him. Every single morning, he would bring me a McDonald's. Um, sandwich breakfast sandwich to school <laughs> i was the one that actually drove past mcdonald's but he would drive in town to mcdonald's and bring me a breakfast sandwich. aaron has aaron had a scar above his back right above his butt that was that went all the way across his back and so i will finally admit this like i gave it to him but by accident <laughs> so we were uh, so we were at my grandma's we were at my great grandma's house and 
literally where we stayed was two beds and the beds were across from each other, like in a hotel room. So I got this bright idea. Like we would jump from bed to bed, you know, and play around. I got this bright idea in my instinct that if I jumped and me and him jumped at the same time and I jumped in midair and pushed him, like nothing bad would happen. Well, no, he flew against the back wall and when he fell, there was uh, a heater and he cut his he cut he cut his back on that. And then I felt really bad and I was like, Ooh, don't tell mom, don't tell mom and so uh, luckily he did but uh, up until till the end he had that scar on his back. So I felt really bad about that. I will admit that. We used the role as <laughs> class president, class vice president. One day, <laughs> we ordered t-shirts from Red Barn. Then we didn't have all these Chillicothe t-shirt places. We ordered shirts from Red Barn, our senior shirts. And me and Reed left school during the day. We always made sure if we had to leave school, it was during the day. Or that we had to get something, we did it during school so we didn't have to. So we got out of class. <laughs> and <laughs> We were never in class. No. I don't ever remember being no. in class. And we drive, oh, we're trying to go back roads so we could take take a long time and you know miss school well we got lost going back roads which I know those roads now but at 17 years old <laughs> you don't know those roads we got lost and about ran out of gas which his mom had gave him a gas card and it was my car and the rule was don't let other people use your gas card. which he filled up my car with that gas card a few times too <laughs> and so we finally made it to BP and he filled up my gas tank but we was gone the entire day because we couldn't find Red Barn in Circleville uh, we would go to Red Lobster and we would have iced tea and biscuit races, which is we would see who could drink the most iced tea and eat the most biscuits before going to the bathroom. <laughs> if you broke the bat and if you went to the bathroom, you lost. Aaron always lost because I was always a bigger kid. But it, it would just be funny because after a while, we would just take our food home because we would drink and eat so much biscuits and iced tea. <laughs> There are lots of good memories, but I do know that when he was young, he really liked to buy things for other people. He really liked to, to get nice presents. He, he bought me a lot of really sweet presents that were, were really nice. And uh, one time he decided uh, for his father's birthday, he wanted to buy him a shirt. So he spent his own money, got this shirt, we wrapped it up, we were ready for it, and um, we came home from from the shopping experience with the wrapped present and um, his dad's birthday wasn't for the next couple of days so he had the present and he was like ha 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 I got you a present I'm not gonna tell you it's a shirt and then he burst into tears like oh my gosh I just told <laughs> he was probably 10 or 11 or at the time it was like and the rest of us are just laughing our butts off because we thought oh he gave it away I think he would be overwhelmed. I really do. I think he would be saying, I'm, I'm not anybody. I'm not, he, he was, he wasn't um, a stellar student. He wasn't extremely um, outstanding as far as his student abilities. He was just kind of an average kid. And I think he would say, I'm just an average kid and I don't understand um, you know why people are, are willing to work as hard as they did um, his friends worked awfully hard and the community worked awfully hard to create the scholarships that we've got and uh, I, I am I know he would be he would be overwhelmingly proud but he also would be saying oh, I, I really don't that's not you know I think he would try to be a little bit humble on that he would be really humble mm -hmm. like he wasn't one that would brag and oh no walk around no. and yeah. as a show off or anything like he was a very humble guy uh-huh do your best uh, try as many different things as you want to try um, you'll learn from bad experiences and good experiences um, and try to help out other people I think he would have really done that You know, Aaron, before, he wanted to, he always wanted to do something, like, and he always wanted to go out. Some of his plans were 
uh, some of his plans. I think he was one of those people who he just wanted to live uh, a good life and wanted to live uh, a peaceful life and just a, a, a small life. Uh, you know, he just wanted, he wanted what probably a lot of uh, people in Southern Ohio want, which is the family and friends and just a small. Um, Aaron wanted to write. He wanted to be a writer. Uh, in fact, he kept a very uh, detailed journal in um, in Iraq, and we did not we weren't able to recover that journal. But he told me about it. He told me that he kept a very detailed journal and wanted to write about his experiences. Um, he before he left, he had taken some classes on in writing in college, and um, I don't know where that would have taken him. He was a good writer. Um, I actually had him. As an English teacher, I actually had him in my English class when he was in eighth grade, which was kind of hard, but, um, but he was a very good writer, and uh, I think that's what he wanted to do. A hug. I number one would run and hug him. Yeah. I want one of those sincere read hugs again. Uh-huh. And then I would just tell him that I loved him and missed him. And yeah, for sure. He, he, I wish my kids knew him. I'm sad for my kids that they don't know him. They didn't have that friendship. A lot of people missed out. And we're very, very blessed that we had that. Amen. He was a really, really good guy. A really good friend. <laughs> I'd probably keep him from enlisting in the military. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably tell him not to do it, but <laughs> but that's what he wanted to do. And I'm so proud of him. I would just give him a big hug. <laughs> because I miss that. I miss his hugs. Physical traits that stood out to you about her? Smile. A smile. A smile. A smile. A smile. It was a megawatt smile. I mean, his smile would light up a room. I think he. I think he does look down on us all the time, and I think he's happy. I think he probably looks down on us a lot, a lot, and laughs. <laughs> In the Bible, uh, David, uh, when he, when he died the Bible said that he served his generation and then he died and I think that's what Aaron Reed did he served his generation and then he died if there was one more thing you could say to him what do you think it would be I love you I miss you and um, I know you're waiting on me